This is the Fandroid.com review of the Samsung Galaxy S5. At first glance, it doesn't seem much has changed from the Samsung Galaxy S4 to the S5. Volume rocker on the left, power button on the right, USB port on the bottom, and tic-tac-shaped home button right above it, just like the S4. A 3.5mm headset jack and IR blaster sit on top of the Samsung logo, where you'll also find an LED light, ambient light sensors, front-facing camera, and earpiece, just like the S4. Removable plastic back, this, that, and the other, just like the S4. You get the idea. Everyone's calling the Galaxy S5 an iterative release and painfully overusing the charge that it's evolutionary, not revolutionary. The smartphone market has matured a bit. It's easy to be dismissive. But if you stop and really think about what Samsung has accomplished with the Galaxy S5, it's pretty remarkable. The 5.1 inch screen is bigger. The 2800 milliamp hour battery is bigger. The 16 megapixel camera, bigger. At 2.5 gigahertz, the quad-core processor is bigger. At 128 gigabytes, its microSD storage space is bigger, thanks to SanDisk. And oh yeah, it's waterproof, and has a fingerprint scanner, and has a heart rate monitor. And all this is somehow packed into a frame that's only a few millimeters and grams more than the S4. So call it iterative, call it evolutionary, call it whatever you want. On paper, I think that's pretty darn impressive. The real question is how do all these features and specs perform in real life? For Samsung, it all starts with the screen. And the Galaxy S5's 5.1 inch Super AMOLED screen is hands down the most vibrant display on the market. Full HD, great pixel clarity, and fantastic viewing angles. On the rear, there's somewhat of a different story. The dimpled faux leather plastic shell is an improvement over last year's gloss, but still doesn't do this flagship phone justice. The whole package is protected by the most welcome new addition to the Galaxy S5, weatherproofing. IP67 certification means it's water and dust resistant. We don't recommend you go swimming with it, but use it in the rain, in the shower, drop it in the toilet, take it to the beach, no problem. This needs to become a standard inclusion on every smartphone and should be as commonplace as Wi-Fi. The home button now doubles as a fingerprint scanner, a neat feature also seen on the iPhone 5S, but the Galaxy S5 intends to leverage it for more than just unlocking your screen, for example, making payments and accessing private files on your phone. You'll find its usefulness limited, and you've got to swipe your finger at just the right angle, making it a two-handed activity that becomes a chore. The heart rate monitor suffers a similar fate, and its core audience is likely much narrower than the finger scanner. Both of these are welcome features, but we're unsure if they'll be developed into something more or if they'll just soon become gimmicks of the past. The S5 runs its heavily customized TouchWiz UI over top Android 4.4 in what seems like a transition year for Samsung. They've greatly improved the look and the feel of the settings pages, but both settings and the app drawer are stuffed with proprietary features that bog down what should be a simple and enjoyable user experience. In other places, such as My Magazine, Samsung has scaled back in favor of simplicity, but it feels more like a half-baked, half-abandoned solution. And then there are places Samsung gets it right, like the new camera UI. The combined effect, though, yields a product that seems a bit scattered and unsure of itself and can sometimes leave the user feeling the same way. The improved software for the 16-megapixel camera is particularly great. Samsung's reorganized menus for consistency, put the most important options front and center, loaded additional options in an overflow menu, and the result is a breath of fresh air. The camera itself produces great photos in broad daylight, but struggles heartily when conditions aren't optimal. I was hoping for a bit more with the S5 camera, but it's a decent shooter with the capability of taking great pictures. Its main problem, which seems like somewhat of a theme in the S5, is consistency. Some new shooting modes include selective focus and a highly improved HDR experience, which are welcome additions, but can't make up for the S5's shoddy performance in low light conditions. What the S5 lacks in software consistency, it makes up for in hardware consistency. This thing is lightning fast and I found nothing but smooth sailing in terms of performance. If you've got an older Android phone that freezes and stutters or loads slowly and has bad battery life, you'll be happy to know the Samsung made these frustrations a thing of the past. Peak performance and the S5 definitely go together. 
One final gripe is with the S5 speakers, which deliver a poor audio experience at full blast. If you listen to a lot of music or watch a lot of videos, YouTube, or crank audio while you're playing games, you'll probably be disappointed by the tinny and muffled audio delivered by the S5. Overall, the Galaxy S5 is a great phone, packed to the brim with features. It's absolutely amazing Samsung was able to cram all this into such a tiny frame. The weatherproofing would definitely go underappreciated, but I'd consider it the best new feature of the S5. The fingerprint scanner and heart monitor will be knocked as gimmicks, time will tell if they are, but their inclusion brings absolutely zero downside, and they can be kind of neat. The camera, audio, and software experience all have room for improvement, but in the grand scheme of things, the Galaxy S5 continues where the Galaxy S4 left off, as one of the best and most powerful smartphones available.